Shout out Kaka, y'all. Check it out. I'm going to put the camera down a little bit. I don't get a chance to, to demonstrate um, great things like uh, Ken Smith basses. I, um, I do have Ken Smith basses on my video, um, but I don't get a chance to, to bring them out and let them be seen. Now, this is a custom job done through the Hobo Depot. Uh, you can see the big uh, uh, eggshell inlays. See that? This is this is a 1995, I think it is. Let's look. Oh, 96. This is a 1996. This is a CR 96. This is a Chuck Rainey 96. Does it have war paint? Of course it does. It's a Ken Smith. It should have some war paint on it. It's a 96. It should have war paint. Do you have war paint? Yes, you do, girl. Well, anyway. I put the eggshell uh, inlays in it, and this is grooved into the to the fretboard and laid in in that way. And of course, you can see that the fretboard has a, a shine on it. That's the way I like it. All right. Um, I, 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 it's it's a lot of things I can say about this bass. Let's let's tell let me tell you what it what the deal is. All right. On the Ken Smith basses, they they all pretty much simple. And Ken is a very simple minded guy when it comes to electronics and stuff because that's where you want it. You don't want to sit there and try to figure out 92,000 things and you only got 10 seconds to do it, maybe less. Ken, thumbs up, baby. All right, so this is a push and pull. That means that when you pull it out, it's passive. When you push it in, it's active. Then you have the blend, and then you have a treble, mid, and bass. How simple can you get? And some of them have switches that goes right between there. And they dip switches. They like dip their, their pickup. And Kara's like, what do you mean dip? Do you mean they dip it for real? Ah, they, they scoop it out a little bit and make it sound different. All right, so this is a Chuck Rainey. Why is it Chuck Rainey? Why do you call it Chuck Rainey? Well, it has a big body, all right, like the BT, old BT Customs, the big, real big headstock with the big S on it. <gasps> Super Smith! <laughs> and then, you know, it's got all the fancy woods on it. I ain't got to tell you what kind of woods is on it. Just know that it's beautiful! And and basically, um, it's a bolt on. That's a, that's that's the Chuck Rainey's a bolt on. All right, I had this one for a while. All right, you know, very verso eldum, verso eldum. I bring it out. <laughs> so this weekend is gonna be your weekend, girl. So anyway, let's go through it. Let's turn everything off. We're gonna pick up first. We're in active mode. I mean, we're in passive mode. Coming through my Eaton World 2 800 and the 410 on the bottom. All Eaton. Okay. Front pickup. Okay. Uh, both pickups. Still in passive mode. About a Ken Smith. Everybody keeps asking, oh man, what's so good about Ken Smith? Uh okay, I'll let you go on because you have issues. <laughs> That's what I tell him. I'm gonna let you go on because you got issues. <laughs> and then they come back and go like, oh, I was joking, man. What's so good about it? Well, there's a lot of things great about Ken Smith. It's the it's the the way his body woods, his his whole attitude toward bass, um, his whole concept. Um, it's a lot of great things about a Ken Smith that's good. All right, and it's not a one-trick pony. Sweet. All right, so let's go active now, and everything is still off in the active mode. Let's go to rear pickup. In the passive mode, the bass gets louder, which is good because a lot of time passive mode bass won't get loud, basses won't get louder. The greatest thing about the Ken Smith is even across the board. What do you mean even across the board? All right, give me a second. I'm gonna get a ruler. No, I'm not gonna do that. I mean, it's even across the board. I mean, it's, you know, every string sounds accurately. Did you say accurately? Yeah, okay. Every string sounds pretty much alike. Shout out, All right, so anyway, as far as volume wise, all right, the bassist has, a, has his own voice. Um, you can hear Ken Smith and not look at it and be on stage and you, you can't see it and you know it's a Ken Smith. So it's got his own signature sound. 
All right, so let's go front pickup. We're in active mode. Okay, it says the, the neck wise is just a, a very, very comfortable feeling wide neck. A lot of people don't like wide necks. I do. But I'm getting into the sixes and stuff like that. I don't know if I'm going to go as far as seven. I do had one. I do had one. <laughs> I do had a seven. I ain't got to had it no more. <laughs> you get it? Get that on the way home. All right, so um, the necks are very comfortable. The woods are amazing. They all go together and sound good. Okay, now both pickups. We're in the active mode. Nothing is on. Is that, that them balls? I hate to say this, y'all, but that's what it is. With the Ken Smith, you get that ball thing happening. <laughs> that ball. It sounds like a, it sounds like an executive sound. And people are like, what is that executive sound? Well, you know, it's, it sounds expensive. So that's what you want to hear? You want to hear expensive sounding stuff? Get a Ken Smith. You can always tell a Smith. There's always something about the characteristics of a Smith. You go like, I ain't even got to look on stage. That's a Smith. All right, so let's go. Let's go. Uh, trouble. Detent. Trouble on detent. Sweet. Get it. I, I, I don't even have to play this thing hard. <laughs> Let's go Miz at D10. The Miz are out there. Listen to that thing, man. Basic D10. Now we're about to open up a new world. You hear that? And the greatest thing about a Ken Smith, it cuts. You can always hear it in the mix. Always. open this all the way up y'all because basically you can hear how it sounds I'm gonna open the treble up and let you hear a little bit more of it pull it back mids all the way up okay pull it back in the detent bass all the way up yikes and I'm in, and I'm tuning E concert <laughs> that cabinet like this you got some more of that <laughs> you got some more of that bottom, do you? I'm like, yeah, Gary. Smith got all kinds of bottom. So, basically, I'm going to cut everything back to the detent. Because I don't, on the Smith, I don't really run anything wide open. Because the bass sounds amazing the way it is. I just funk it the way it is. Ken Smith lovers and people who don't never who, who have never owned a Ken Smith, I think it's a, a great investment to do so. You know, a lot of people like boutique bases. This is my first boutique base that I, I pretty much went after. Okay, when I started playing, I always kept saying, "Man, I, I want one of those sound that sound right there. I want that sound right there." I got it through the music man, but it just wasn't that sound. So what I did is I went and I got a Ken Smith. Okay, and that's what I did. 
when I got a Kinsmith and this is what she sounds like. So guys, if you're looking for a Kinsmith sound, it's not for everybody. A, a Jazz is not for everybody. A P bass is not for everybody. A Tobias is not for everybody. A MTD is not for everybody. You know, a Sukop's not for everybody. An Elric is not for everybody. Just for me, if you're gonna give it to me. <laughs> Turn it off. It's for me, if you're gonna give it to me. But it's not, every bass is not for everybody. There are some people that I always say I admire. I admire you if you have a bass that you've been playing for 40 years. Just that bass. I admire you. Shot of caca. Double shot of caca. Double shot of caca. And for those who can't play one bass for five days, I admire you too, bro. Because you must got the money to go get something else. Sweet. When you get tired of what you got, send it my way. Johnny Lee Long. Shout out Kaka. Peace out, y'all.